Ishmael, An Adventure of the Mind and Spirit by Daniel Quinn. A mentor seeks a student with an earnest desire to save the world. That's what an ad reads in the newspaper and our protagonist sees it and at first he's annoyed by the pretentious wording. This guy has been disillusioned by the world and the ad kind of reminds him of the idealism of his youth growing up in the counterculture of the 1960s. But he also becomes curious because this is exactly the type of teacher he himself was looking for as a youth. Not being able to shake off the idea of the guru, he decides to seek him up. And this is how he meets Ishmael, a giant gorilla. Doom and gloom is what awaits you in this philosophical and brain-tickling classic. Ishmael, let's go. Hi and welcome to the book lab, I'm Bjorn and this is the place where we bring you the best book recommendations when it comes to philosophy, psychology, human nature and human potential and today we're going to talk about Ishmael by Daniel Quinn. In this book, this book is a Socratic dialogue between a stubborn student and a very wise primate. They're discussing the trajectory of humanity and how we can change direction before it all goes down the drain, bringing every other species along with us. Why a gorilla? It doesn't really get explained, but it works pretty well with the story. Civilized man is doomed because we refuse to live according to the law of life. Instead of man living as man belong to the world, like all other animals do, we have taken the law and inverted it into the world belongs to man. As a result, man has overreached, we have created an unsustainable way of living and as a consequence we have signed our own death sentence. Quote, the disaster occurred when 10,000 years ago the people of your culture said we are as wise as the gods and can rule the world as well as they. Agriculture is to blame, according to Ishmael, because agriculture leads to population growth and population growth leads to an increased uh, food production, which leads to even more population growth. And as a result of this endless loop, we see deforestation, pollution and extinct wildlife. The story of our culture says that humans are special, yet they are flawed. We are meant to create paradise on earth, but we repeatedly screw it up because we, humans, are inherently flawed. And we can't fix ourselves because we believe knowing how to live is unknowable for us. The bulk of the story revolves around the concept of taker culture and lever culture. These are the names given to the two distinct ways that uh, human societies are structured. Leavers are the name given to the people who never really adopted agriculture and still lives a hunter-gatherer existence. Takers, on the other hand, they were the people that adopted agriculture, which eventually led to private property and they basically built the civilized world. They are the ones that broke the natural order of things and just like they were gods, they decided that they could rule over themselves other people and other species. Ishmael, our wise gorilla, he uses old stories, stories like the story of Adam and Eve and Cain and Abel to illustrate the differences in mentality between the lever culture and the taker culture, the differences that have resulted in a world at the brink of extinction. What will happen if you feed the starving millions? Ishmael asked this question rhetorically. He says that if we do, they will reproduce, creating even more starving people. And a big theme in this book is overpopulation. It talks about starvation being a natural function of the natural world and that fighting it is futile. One question that Ishmael asks his student is, if he could, would he teleport back to a lever existence, a hunter-gatherer existence? And I pondered that question myself uh, when reading this book and I was surprised about the ambiguity of my answer because I was really hesitant if I would do it. Even though 
I actually believe that agriculture might have been the biggest mistake that humanity ever made. I still hesitate uh, if I would do it, even though I know that living a natural life would be probably much better for myself and most of us, both mentally and physically. Is Ishmael still worth reading? Given that it was uh, released quite some time ago, it was published back in 1992, I think. And I would say it is. And it's absolutely beginner friendly since it's philosophy dressed up in a fictional dress. Uh, it's a super accessible book. I never really read a book before that talks about the topic of um, population restriction. Um, a topic that could be quite sensitive, but um, the book does a really good job of opening up the possibility to the reader and handle it really well, because it could be a quite uh, controversial topic if not handled with care. I really enjoy this book. I listen to it as an audiobook. Uh, by the way, if you don't use audiobooks, it's a really great way to get more reading done, especially if you're busy. So check out my video on how to get started with audiobooks. I put a link in the description below about it. And I remember listening to it. And every time I took a pause for some reason, I felt like I immediately wanted to get back to the book. It reads like fiction because it is fiction, but it's also a deeply philosophical book about the direction of humanity and where we're heading and what it means to me be human and if we're living in the right manner. If you're interested in other books that critique the human worship of progress, then you should definitely check out Straw Dogs, which made it to my book of the year list. It's by John Gray. It's uh, Straw Dogs, Thoughts on Humans and Other Animals. This book is a critique of uh, liberal humanism and it's definitely a must read, even if it can be hard to sleep at night while you read it. So check out the full review of this book. Ishmael revolves around the big challenges that humans are facing and so does next week's book review. Uh, I'm reviewing Scary Smart by Mo Gavdat, the future of artificial intelligence and how you can save our world. This book is about the probably the most imminent challenge that humans are facing. AI, it's here, it's not going away and things are gonna get weird. So uh, check out the channel next week to get more information about this book. Hint, hint, it's super good. That's all from me this week. Uh, happy reading, Bjorn out.